All right, YouTube, welcome back to part two of the horror FPS kit um, horror game here that I am calling Oris. And today I'm going to show you guys how to add your first uh, NPC zombie. Um, a little bit of changes I made uh, since part one. And I'm going to show you guys how to do the nav mesh, which is basically um, an area of navigation, all this... Um, blue stuff you see right here is basically the area which our zombie can actually walk on. Um, anything not highlighted is not walkable. As you can see I added some like trash and stuff. This was actually a um, suggestion from somebody in the comments um, adding some trash and making it more look more dirty and stuff. So um, this is another asset I will link in the description. And um, as you can see, I have some trash here. I'm not, I'm not done yet. I gotta add a lot more, but you know, make it look more grungy. All right, perfect. So the first thing we want to do, um, I'm gonna set up our nav mesh. Show you guys how to do that. Um, certain objects um, you don't want the zombie obviously walking on, so we can make these not walkable. Um, if you guys are using this manner, uh, sorry, not the manner, but this old office. Um, I will show you guys how to make it so the zombie can actually walk through doors, uh, not through doors, but through rooms. Um, because uh, as you can see here, um, this door, he can actually walk through. Uh, let me, oops, put that back. There we go. Um, and I will show you guys how I fix that. Uh, as you can see on our navigation, there is a path here. So our zombie, um, when I first made this, the zombie couldn't walk through and it took me some messing with. Um, all right, so here is a zombie here. Um, before I get into that, let me show you guys how to do the nav mesh. So basically in your inspector, you'll see a navigation window. Um, if you don't, I believe it's window um, somewhere up here. Um, I'll have to find where it actually is. Um, I, think it's, I think it's up here automatically. Um, Oh, game object UI. No, okay, yeah, it, it it should be up there. Somebody let me know in the comments where where navigation is. I don't remember, but I think mine was already up here. Um, so we have four different things here. We have agents, areas, bake, and object. Um, areas, I th walkable, non-walkable, and jump are the only ones I'm using. Um, so those are the only ones I'm concerned about. I'm not going to touch that. Agent is basically our humanoid. This is our agent here, our zombie. Um, our enemy basically is what you know he, what our agent is um, radius um, and height I think radius is the only one that matters I just made him point to um, yours might be different but I found that this uh, point two is a good number for him fitting through tighter spaces um, like this over here now let's say that we want to let's say we had this guy over here and we were to move it this way as you can see our zombie now um, it's going to confuse it because he can walk in this area but we have an object here that we don't want him walking on right so we would go to object here now i already made this not walkable but since i moved it i would have to go back to bake and I'm gonna, let me bake this again and as you can see it kind of cuts around our trash can here so now that the zombie can't walk through this he can walk around it um, and if I were to move it back and hit bake again as you can see it fills that area in and now we can't walk over here cool so if you guys are using this asset here um, if you notice there are certain areas and I there's these little door seals down here and I actually deleted them um, because our zombie couldn't walk over them um, so what I did and there's probably a better way to do this but all I did was and as you can see when I go to navigation there's a there's a gap here so our zombie would not be able to get from this hallway to this room and he would just be standing there and obviously be a huge bug so all I did was I took an area of this floor and I just kind of stretched it out just enough to cover this gap here and now if we hit bake again as you can see it creates a path because there was a gap here to nothing and now um, you know, our, our, our zombie can walk through into this room here. Um, all these areas, um, this door would be blocking it. So if I were to move this door, um, let's see here, object, oh, inspector here. 
if I were to open this door and if I were to hit bake again right here there is now an area where our zombie can walk into there and if we were to animate these doors to open and close um, then you know we'd be able to have all this area covered here I haven't done that yet but that is basically the essentials of giving a uh, zombie an area to walk so um, there's really not much to it um, just kind of go around your map and see you know what areas are blocked you know if there's any areas that like all this you can get up here um, you can go to your agent and you can mess with like you know the slope right so the max slope you can walk up is a 45 degree angle which is the stairs right here um, so probably want to keep that the same now if you do have big objects like this like desks and stuff um, if we go to another office area um, I just manually do it so I already did these but you know just highlight our desks over here all the big objects we don't want them walking through and we just go to object and we go to not walkable uh, and then hit bake and uh, I already did that but as you can see um, you know we don't want our zombie walking through these um, it make sure that it is static as well um, so you need to recognize that oh this is a static object it's not gonna move and then uh, you know we do that hit static hit not walkable and uh, there it is now there is a jump option, but I'm not using that as well. But that is basically how we get our nav mesh to work. And we will need a nav mesh for our zombie to walk on. Now, setting up this zombie, um, there's actually a lot of things we can do here. Um, let's go to our zombie and our inspector here. And as you can see, the zombie has a ton of settings we can add. Um, his health, his maximum health, um, sounds, headshot damage, corpse removal time. I took that off because I like seeing corpses all over the place. Uh, we have, you know, walk velocity, uh, his volume. There's just tons of things we can enable. Scream, agony, hunger, sound reaction. Um, the ones I messed with were uh, his sight field of view, his attack field of view. So I, I, I kind of narrowed him down a little bit because I didn't want him attacking us. Um, if he can't actually see us, so I narrow these down slightly. Um, his sight distance I kept the same. Um, his attack distance I lowered that slightly. And his idle hear range, which is this sphere right here. Um, as you can see, we can raise that and lower that. Um, this is the range where he can hear us. So if he hears us within this range, he will attack us. Um, so I just wanted to make it a little bit easier, so I lowered that range slightly. Um, there's other things like a bunch of sounds. Um, if you guys haven't noticed, a lot of the sounds that come with this asset are actually like Call of Duty zombie sounds, which, you know, if we're making our own game, we don't we, we, we don't want to be a spinoff, right? We want to create something unique. So I just went on epidemicsound.com. Um, I will link that in the description. You guys get a free seven-day trial if you want to use it. Um, but I believe it's like 10 or $15 a month. But they have a lot of great sound effects that you guys can use or, you know, you can just pull some off YouTube. Um, the zombie does have a behavior so uh, we have an idle behavior asleep um, so if he's sleeping um, he will actually be laying on the ground and then if he if he senses you and you alert him he will actually stand up and attack you um, so I just made him idling so he's just standing here and he's kind of like moving around and um, you guys will see that when I play the game and we also have waypoints so we can set waypoints here and that's what these yellow things are. Now, basically our waypoints is, it's just an empty object with a waypoint script um, attached to it. And what will happen is if our zombie chases us and he loses us and we successfully evade him, basically, he will come back and start patrolling these three waypoints randomly. So he can go from here to here, back to here to here. Um, so he will just start patrolling this room. Um, at first he's just gonna be idling but it's only after we alert him and we successfully evade him will he come back and start um, patrolling these waypoints here so let me go ahead and play this for you guys and uh, show you guys how that all looks here let me full screen this here we go And 
I definitely appreciate that suggestion for the trash. Um, it does make the game have a much better zombie type feel. show you guys what happens when we alert the zombie here. <laughs> now I don't have any weapons to defend. Him. It's very important to alert him right away. And that is basically it guys. Um, as you can see, every area that we have he can walk on. Well, I appreciate you sticking around. Um, I did adjust the brightness of the lantern slightly. I thought it was a little dim from the previous video. And if you guys remember the trigger here, uh, I deleted that mannequin just because I thought it didn't really make a whole lot of sense. Um, I might add them later, have some more jump scares, but you know, right in the big. Right in the beginning of the game, I didn't think it made a whole lot of sense. So awesome, guys. Um, so yeah, this video was just basically a run through of the nav mesh system. Um, and, uh, you know, adding your first NPC zombie. Um, you know, the zombie comes with all the scripts attached to it already. So all you guys got to do is just mess with the settings, mess with the numbers until you find something you like. All right, you guys. And that is it for part two. Um, stay tuned for part three. If you guys want to give me a like and subscribe, that would really help. Help out the channel. And uh, I will see you in the next one. Peace out.